Hello, I'm Denise, and this is going to be a series of videos which are hopefully going to show you the practical and statistical methods of geometric morphometrics. So what is geometric morphometrics? Well, traditional caliper-based measurements only really describe the distance between two points. They don't describe the points in relation to all the other points, and they also don't describe the angles between the points, so you can miss a lot of variation between the shapes. So to overcome these problems, a more sophisticated method called geometric morphometric was created. So relative positions of landmarks are compared between individuals or groups uh, using the set of landmarks to describe the shape. So a landmark is basically a two or three dimensional point described by a set of rules. So the set of rules, it must be present on all the studied organisms or it has to be marked um, approximately or you're not used at all. Uh, the number of landmarks cannot exceed the number of specimen samples, and then the results do depend directly on the quality of the landmarks. Uh, there are three types of landmark. True landmarks, which have some biological significance. So for example, origin of the uh, dorsal fin there. Um, pseudo landmarks, which are defined by relative locations, such as the point of highest curvature of this here. And then there are semi-landmarks, which are defined by a location relative to other landmarks, such as midway between landmarks 1 and 8 would be landmark 9. So landmarking is one of the obviously most important parts of geometric morphometrics, but the second most important part is the procrustis analysis. So if we were to plot all of these points for all of our samples after doing the landmarking, just on a graph, it would look like this, just a mess basically. So what we do with the procrustis analysis is, if you imagine uh, these are two sets of landmarks, first all the landmarks, sorry, the configuration landmarks um, are scaled to the same size, then they are transposed onto the same center of gravity, and then they are rotated to the same orientation, and this allows them to be compared. So if you were to plot the procrustis coordinates, uh, this is what it would look like. So these are going to be all the sections, this set of videos. So first I'll go through the practical methods, how to photograph the fish and how you can best avoid error to get the best results you can. Then I'll go through photo editing. This isn't an integral prerequisite of geometric morphometrics, but it can help to pick out the features, uh, particularly because landmark can be quite a boring task when you're going through all of these fish. And also it'll be great to make figures when you do your final paper, because these photographs can really make your graphs pop. And then in the next part, I'll show you how to do all the landmarking. Um, once you've got your coordinates, there's sort of two methods that I'm going to show. First, there's MorphoJ and SPSS. This is the simplest method if you're not really used to using any of these programs. But then the second method is R, which can be quite complicated if you haven't used it before. If you're doing large amounts of data and you might have to go back and add in other things, you can just repeat the code rather than having to go through all the methods again in the other programs.